Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to see some solved questions in the topic keys in RDBMS. Let's step into question number one. The question is, which of the following is correct about keys in DBMS? And the options are given. Option A, it is mandatory in tables. Option B, it can be changed frequently. Option C, it can be a set of one or more columns that uniquely identify a record. And option D, all of the above. I request you to pause this video for a while and think about the right answer. I hope you are done. And the right answer for this question is option C. Key can be a set of one or more columns or attributes that uniquely identify a record. Why option A is incorrect? Because we may have a table or a relation which may contain a key attribute or may not contain a key attribute. And hence we can't say that it is always mandatory in the table or relations. At the same time, the column or attribute that is chosen as a key will not be changed frequently. Only in a very rare situation it can be changed. But generally, key attributes cannot be changed frequently. And that is why for question number 1, option C is the right answer. We are done with question number 1. Let's now move on to question number 2. And the question is, referring to the below table, a table is given, which attribute is appropriate to be a key attribute? So we are given with the table employee which contains attributes ID, which means employee ID, name of the employee, department, salary and city. And we are required to find which attribute in this list of five attributes can be appropriate to be a key attribute. Let's see the options. The options are option A ID, option B name, option C salary and option D none of the above. I request you to pause this video for a while and think about the right answer. And the right answer for this question is option A, ID. Every employee will have an ID and this will be unique throughout the organization. And that's why we are preferring ID as the key attribute. Why we are not preferring name as a key attribute? Because many employees may have the same name. At the same time, many employees may have the same salary structure also. And that's why the column or attribute ID can be appropriate to be a key attribute. We are done with question number 2. Let's now move on to question number 3. The question is, referring to the below schema, which attribute or attributes is or are appropriate for being a key attribute? And the schema is, the student relation which contains the attributes name, date of birth, age, city and zip code. And what are all the options? Option A, name. Option B, name and date of birth. Option C, name and city. And option D, none of the above. Please pause this video for a while and think about the right answer. Let's analyze the options. In this case, name alone cannot be a key attribute because we know multiple students may have the same name. And that's why this A cannot be a key attribute. And coming to name and date of birth, this is a composite key where multiple columns or attributes combine together to form a key. In this case, the composite key name plus date of birth may uniquely identify a tuple. But we can't guarantee 100%. There are chances that student name and the same date of birth may also exist in the same database. And coming to option C, name plus city. Again, there may be more than one student with the same name from the same city as well. So I would say this is also not appropriate for being a key. And option D, none of the above. And the right answer for this question is option D, none of the above because name, name plus date of birth and name plus city cannot uniquely identify a tuple. But to some extent, name and date of birth may uniquely identify, but it actually depends on the database. We are done with question number three and let's move on to question number four. The question is, the minimal super key is called as dash key. And the options are option A primary key, option B foreign key, option C candidate key and option D alternate key. And the right answer for this question is option C candidate key. Because candidate key is the minimal set of attributes that can uniquely identify a tuple. In simple terms, a candidate key is a minimal super key with no repeated data. 
A super key may contain extraneous attributes, but this candidate key is the minimal super key. Also, a table can have multiple candidate keys, but exactly one primary key. Why am I not choosing primary key as the right answer? Because a primary key itself is a candidate key. And why foreign key is not considered? Because foreign key are used for referential integrity where it involves two tables. And coming to the last option, the alternate key, the candidate key other than the primary key is called an alternate key. Say for example, we may have five candidate keys and one of the keys will be chosen as the primary key and the rest of the keys are called as alternate keys. We are done with question number four. Let's move on to question number five. The question is, the subset of super key is a candidate key under what condition? And the options are, option A, any subset is a super key. Option B, all subsets are super keys. Option C, no proper subset is a super key. And option D, none of the above. I request you to pause this video for a while and think about the right answer. I hope you are done. To find the answer for this question, I am going to bring in the same example which we had seen in the last presentation. We know what is a candidate key. A candidate key is a minimal super key. And we know what is a super key. It is the superset, the all possible keys in a relation. And this is the superset actually. Let's take an example. Here I am going to take an example called name and phone number which is a super key. And this is also a candidate key. We know how to derive candidate key from the super keys. If you are not sure, I request you to watch my previous lecture about keys in RDBMS. So when we talk about this key, name and phone number, now this is actually a set. And when we say this is a set, what are all the subset we can derive from the set? Name alone and phone number alone. So when we say name alone and phone number alone are separate subsets, and this is from this set, when we create the subset from this set name phone number combo, then name alone and phone number alone are separate subsets. I mean, name alone is one subset, phone number alone in another subset. But actually, name alone and phone number alone are not keys at all. And that's why option A is invalid. Any subset is a super key is not correct. And coming to option B, all subsets are super keys. Obviously, this is also invalid because when any subset is a super key is not valid, then obviously all subsets are super keys is also not valid. Let's take the same example name and phone number. Name separately and phone number separately are subsets. And obviously the subset name and the subset phone number are not super keys at all. And that's why the option B all subsets are super keys is not correct. And coming to option C, no proper subset is a super key which is true. You know why? Let's take this example, name, SSN and phone number. When we take this as a set, name, SSN and phone number, we can have multiple subsets for this. Name alone, name and SSN, name and phone number. Can you see name and phone number? So what I mean to say here is, when I take this as the subset, and we can see there is a super key or super set, which has additional attribute. When we take name, SSN and phone number, we have name, phone number here, we have additional attribute here. So the right answer in simple terms, the subset of a set cannot be the same set. And candidate key is a set from super key, which cannot be the whole of the super set. So option C is the right answer here. And option D is obviously not correct because option C is already the correct answer. So the right answer for the question, the subset of super key is a candidate key under what condition? And the condition is no proper subset is a super key. We are done with question number five. Let's move on to question number six. The question is, we can define more than one primary key in a single table. And this is a true or false question. And the right answer for this question is false. Because we cannot define more than one primary key in a single table. We may have multiple candidate keys, but one of the candidate keys only will be chosen as a primary key. And hence, we can define only one primary key in a single table. We are done with question number six. Let's move on to the last question. The question is, which key is used to make relationship between two tables? And the options are, option A, super key, option B, candidate key, option C, primary key, and option D, foreign key. And it's very easy to answer this question because when we talk about two tables and the relationship among two tables, obviously option D, foreign key is used. 
and that's it guys i hope you liked this video and thank you for watching